Such furniture as a bent wood chair is made by wetting wood, then bending it and letting it harden into carved shapes and patterns. This technology appeared in the mid-19th century. After winning markets of Europe and the USA, it appeared in Kazakhstan in the early 20th century. This chair used to be part of the furniture in the office of an outstanding public figure, Sanjaros Findiarov. These unique items are brought from everywhere. They are dated back to 1930. This book was kept at the National Commissariat of Healthcare. It has remarks made by Asfindiyarov, and now it can be considered as a true relic. A group of Kazakh people who had been fighting for a better future of their people appeared in the late 19th and the early 20th century, at the time of fateful historic events. Sanjaras Findiarov was one of those who were both active participants of riots and were outspoken about the political system of Kazakhstan. Sanjar Zhaparulya Svindiyarov is a great son of the Kazakh nation and his contribution to the development of the economy and culture of Kazakhstan is difficult to overestimate. Sanjar Svindiyarov was born in 1889 in Tashkent. He was the offspring of the Han of the Little Jews. His father, Sage Zhapar, was a bright representative of his time who succeeded in the diplomatic service of the Russian Tsar, who received the title of Major General, occupied high posts at the Russian Turkestan, and was fluent in several languages. Father of Sanjar insisted that his son entered the Imperial Military Medical Academy in St. Petersburg, after he graduated from the college in Tashkent. At that time, medicine in Kazakhstan was poorly developed. Sometimes one doctor had to cure 50 to 60 villages, and it was very difficult to find a doctor in the region. Sage Apar saw people dying of famine and infectious diseases. This is why he persuaded him to receive medical education. At that time, St. Petersburg was the capital of the Russian Empire and considered as the cradle of science and culture. The city gave higher education to representatives of the Kazakh young people, who then became public and state figures. In this city, young Sanjar Svindiyarov met Haleldas Muhammadov and Mustafa Shokai. Staying far from their homeland, they often met up and organized holidays. General interests and views brought young people closer. They had been assembling in the house of the famous lawyer and member of the state Duma, Sereli Lapin. During one of such meetings, Asfindiyarov met his future wife, Rabiga, who was the daughter of the master of the house. Apart from being an outstanding lawyer, Sereli Lapin was fluent in several languages and had been translating oriental poetry into the Kazakh language. His daughter Rabiga was the graduate of the privileged boarding school for daughters of the aristocracy in Smolny. Rabiga Lapina was very beautiful and she was an aristocrat. She was the offspring of the Kinesari Khan, the ruler of Atrar, and Sanjara Svindyarov was the offspring of Abul Khair Khan. In such a manner, descendants of the two royal families met in St. Petersburg. They fell in love with each other and their love was pure and endless. In 1912, Sanjara Svindyarov graduated from the military and medical academy and received the rank of lieutenant. The young specialist was sent as a doctor to the hospital of the 10th Rifle Regiment, which was situated in the Termes Bastion of the Turkestan military region. In 1914, the young doctor went to the First World War. 
During one of the fights, the regiment was encircled and Sanjar Svindyarov spent one month in captivity. Young doctor continued medical work and provided medical aid for prisoners of war. During this time, he learned German. In general, Sanjar was the first and the only representative of the Kazakh intellectuals who participated in the First World War. He cured the ill and wounded soldiers. In 1916, Asfendiarov returned to his homeland through Sweden and got involved into public activity. After the February Revolution, he participated in the work of councils in Termes and Bukhara. He was also elected to the Tashkent district and then regional council of soldiers and workers' deputies. In Tashkent, he participated in the establishment of the first council of Muslim workers' deputies and actively protected the rights of war participants. The revolutionary movement was actively developing in Turkestan, Kazakhstan and Russia and Asfendiarov became member of the Soviet of Workers and Soldiers Deputies. After the establishment of the Soviet power, Sanjar Asfendiarov returned to his medical practice. During the mass famine, people desperately needed medical help. Famine, epidemics and breakdowns were gaining rampancy and there were very few doctors. In order to prevent the epidemics, the Council of People's Commissars decided to provide medical assistance to the population, and Asfendiarov headed the medical department of Sirdarya and opened medical stations. Asfendiarov was both a rare specialist and a good organizer. His activity is closely connected with the socio-economic and cultural changes in Kazakhstan and Central Asia. In 1919 he was appointed the People's Healthcare Commissar. In 1920 the People's Commissar of the Land and Water Economy of the Turkestan ASSR and then the Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Turkestan Communist Party. He had been fighting for the equal rights for immigrants and local residents. These people often face difficulties in land and water issues. During his numerous travels, he became interested in the culture and history of the Kazakh nation, which in the future became a theme of his numerous scientific works. He had done a lot to tackle issues of land for benefit of the local population. He promoted the return of initially Kazakh lands, which according to the decree of the Russian ruler, were given to immigrants and local farmers. These three departments are very important in the history. The higher education of the country begins from education of people at these three departments. Today, scientists, teachers, physicists, chemists and journalists should be grateful to Sanjar Svindyarov for laying the basis of the higher education in Kazakhstan. In 1930, Sanjar Svindyarov was appointed the Chancellor of the Medical Institute. The museum established in this university keeps his documents, family photographs and even photos taken after his arrest. The exposition of this museum involves 34,000 different documents and 1.5,000 exhibits including a bookshelf, a chair from his office and a lamp. These household items came to us from the 1930s and act as evidence of that difficult time. These items belong to a person who has become a symbol of wholehearted service to his nation. He was the first who explained the meaning of folk ethnos and that is why we value him as an ethnographer and historian. His name stands in line with such famous people as Ahmed Baytursinov, Alihan Bogeyhanov and Turar Riskulov. 
алда негиз сыну кажет деп ойлойм. Ахмед Байтурсынов Алихан Бекиханов осы мына тура рысқулов. He made a significant contribution to the preservation of the Kazakh nation, the establishment of its scientific potential and Kazakh statehood. His name has a particular place in the Kazakh history. Қазақ халқының сақталып қалуына үлкен еңбек сіңірген Санжар Жафарұлы Асфендеровтың еңбегі әрқашан да біздің есімізде мәңгі қалуы керек. Social activist who fought for a decent future of his people was accused of spying for Japan and in 1938 he was sentenced to death and was rehabilitated only 20 years after that. In order to pay tribute to one of the best representatives of the Kazakh nation, who has become the synonym of selfless love and dedicated labor for the sake of his people, the Almaty State Medical University was named after the person who had initiated his establishment. The street in Almaty was named after him and a house on the Tolibi Street, where he used to live, has a memorial plaque dedicated to Sanjar Asfendiarov.